Hello, everyone who may or may not be here. No comments yet, so it might be just us. Who knows? Steven's on his way. He's is at he? a buffet. Sauce is supposed to be here, too. Well, he demands his invite, whether he shows up or not. Um, welcome, everyone, to episode 172 of Retro Fandangle. I'm here, buried on Mars. I'm here with my buddy, Ramvox, Richard. Hello. I'm and Kevin. I have... My old man snacks. Yeah, I see. You're uh, snacking away. They're extra crunchy, too. That's uh, a 6 a.m. snack. It's a little odd time for a snack, isn't it? Well, it's me needing something to get me through this. It's not, it's not much. It's a lot of work for you. <laughs> Shut up. A lot of effort. How long, how long <laughs> after you wake up do you eat breakfast? Well, I'm still doing the 12 hours of fasting thing so not until 9 a.m oh, or actually more oh. 16 hours fasting so i don't i get up at 5 a.m today i got up at 5 a.m sometimes it's earlier sometimes 4 30 whatever but today i could get up 5 a.m and then i eat breakfast at 9 a.m um so you get like a coffee tea something coffee. before then right yeah coffee that's it you can just survive on liquids it was uh difficult for the first few days but that now now my body's just used to it Hmm. Like I'll be hungry a little bit, but like I can't do it without coffee. Without like if I am not drinking anything or without liquid, I guess. Hmm. Um, then that's not good times. I start getting no. a headache in that. But as long as I'm hydrated, drinking coffee or water or something, then it's not that bad. On a weekday, like if I gotta, you know, get my kids ready for school, make them breakfast, you know, make sure they got all their stuff together. Then I can, you know, just keep moving, just get stuff done. I don't, I don't think about uh, food, but on the weekend, nah, it's like, if I'm up, I'm eating. Yeah. You know, Rocket Sauce is here. Welcome. What's up, Brian? Okay, we got a lot to get to. So, uh, let's do the house cleaning. Quick Save Club is uh, still playing racing games. Torchlight 2 episode will be uh, recording this weekend. Mm -hmm. So get ready for that to be hitting the old uh, Cartridge Club feed very soon. If all goes well, this would be our, I think, our third time attempting to record it. So who knows? <laughs> uh, Cartridge Club is wrapping up Wonder Boy 3. So it's still some time to get in there and play it. And then uh, next month, it'll be Ghostbusters, the video game. A lot of exciting things coming up for that episode. Oh, yeah. The, the wheels are in motion. And then in, in March, they're playing uh, Turtles, Ninja Turtles. RF Gen is taking the month off. We'll find out what they're doing uh, next month. Um, we already did our film Dango over on Discord, but we're going to be talking about the movie in this episode. We didn't invite anybody either. We, the, Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we invited a lot of people and only one person showed up. But one other person, I got a, a private message from one other person who said they tried to be there, but their work um, internet, the, the net nanny at work wouldn't let them through. For mm. some reason, so, uh, so, but next month you're not going to want to miss next month, next month's film dangle because we will be doing Godfather one and two, and three if you feel like it. It's been a while; been about ten years since I've watched those, so I'm way overdue. What what year is Godfather two? You know, seventy four. I think that Godfather hurt? one is seventy two and. The other one's 74. Maybe it's 70 and 72. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not there yet. I don't have the, the fun facts yet. Actually, we don't have any fun facts for this movie either. I forgot all, all about that. that. I oh, forgot oh, all about oh, that. God. Like, geez. Oh, well. Uh, okay. Well, I want to say congratulations to STC Pod for their 300th episode. Here, here. I forgot to mention it uh, last week. They had just recorded it the day before, and I meant to say something, but I didn't add it in the outline, so I forgot all about it. So I made sure to put it in this one. But it's okay. It's not like the old days where if you missed a week, then you were you were screwed. Now that they only record once a month or so, you got a full month to congratulate them on their 300th episode. So congratulations. Even though I did take some shrapnel from some people, that I didn't even throw a grenade at them. And I still got shrapnel. I didn't even say anything to them. Oh, they, they can uh, save up that shrapnel. There's been plenty over the years. They got they got upset 
with me for saying something to someone that had nothing to do with, well, at least half with them, half of them. It was funny, the, the, the person, the half of that show that I did kind of throw a grenade at didn't say anything, but the other person said something. It was a little weird. A little weird. Huh. Hmm. Oh, it's a milestone nonetheless. They didn't do anything yes. special, but... No, why would you? No. I mean, no. the show is not special anymore, so why do anything special for it? I guess it's enough that they just dragged themselves in front of the microphone. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to give a couple of... Uh, what do they call it? In memoriam? Memorandum? Memoriam? Uh, obits. I want to mention a couple of people who had passed away, a couple of celebrities who had passed away. Uh, one was uh, Larry King. Uh, not as big of a, a force in my uh, life as uh, Regis Philbin, but uh, he was still uh, important. Um, again, uh, I, I connected with my grandmother with Larry King because she would watch Larry King every night. And uh, when I would talk to her on the phone, she'd give me a report of whomever Larry King had on. So um, that was always interesting. And then she would tell me, like, what happened during the interview. And, you know, one thing that Larry King did well was that he would uh, he would go into interviews cold. He wouldn't know anything about the his uh, guest. Uh, a lot of times he did, but sometimes he wouldn't. And, and it's funny because... You know, a lot of interviewers are not really comfortable doing that, right? They feel like as if they need to know something about the person that they're interviewing. But he liked uh, going in cold and just learning about the person. And what he did well was that he would, like, he's, a lot of interviewers are really good at asking, you know, the what and the how. But a lot of people wouldn't ask the why. Like, why did you do this? Why would you do that? Like, a lot of reporters are, are almost afraid to ask that question. You know, they just want to get just the facts. And uh, that was Larry's kind of uh, talent. And, um, you know, a lot of people who watched him appreciated how he would just start off from scratch because they would learn about whomever the subject that he was interviewing along with him. You know, a lot of times people would watch and not know who the person is or whatever. So um, and it's funny how that kind of got lost over time. Like he just went viral. I think a few months ago, it was some question that he asked. There's some actor that's on the show or was on the show community and he's kind of well-known. I don't know who he is either. Um, so Larry King, like basically asked them, uh, asked this guy, the question, this actor, like, Hey, what, uh, what do you like to do for fun? And so his answer was something to the effect of like, I just like to sit at home, watch Netflix, eat pizza or popcorn or whatever, and just watch TV. And Larry King was like, well, what do you mean? You don't like to, you know, go on private jets and, you know, go to on, on these big, uh, you know, vacations or anything like that. And his response was, Larry, I'm a, a voice actor on DuckTales, <laughs> you know, but Larry King had like it in his head that he was like some big superstar, probably because somebody before the interview told him that he was, you know, a, a celebrity that was uh, bigger than what he was. But hmm. sometimes it backfired on him, you know, sometimes it would backfire in his face because he would absolutely know nothing about him. But it, it was a talent that he had. And, you know, he, he was kind of slipping when he got older, but, you know. Okay, and the other one, other person I wanted to mention was Cloris Leachman. If you went back to my uh, juicy stats for 2020 of the entire year, mm -hmm. uh, there was a movie I watched last year called uh, The Last the Last Picture Show. It had been on my bucket list for a while to, to get to that movie because I heard so many good things about it. And I went in cold. I really didn't know too much about it. I just knew that it was a good movie. And uh, it was it was surprising to me because it's a black and white drama from, from the early 70s. And it's about uh, young people growing up in this uh, small town in the southern uh, U.S. And, it, it, you know, it's like a, a character piece, you know. And uh, in the middle of the movie, Cloris Leachman pops up. There she is. Like, wow, what is she doing in this movie? Because I know her from comedy stuff you know like uh she, she was on mary tyler moore show and she was in young frankenstein she worked with mel brooks quite a bit here she pops up in this drama and just steals the show like you had a young sybil shepherd in this movie uh jeff bridges in this movie um a bunch of young celebrities like in their first roles in that and she was the one who stole the show i don't want to even tell anyone like what she did in the movie, but she, there is the very last scene in the movie is hers. 
and uh, she did this this scene in one take with no rehearsal. Just boom, went in, went on set, did it, done. They tried to reshoot it afterwards, but just not could not capture that uh, that first take, and that's the take that ended up in that movie. Worth watching the last picture show just to see that final scene, and I believe she won an Oscar for that uh, for that role. So check out the last picture show. So some old people died. Well, they were old. Yeah, she was ninety four, and he was. 89 or I think he might have been in his 90s. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Well, still like, yeah, you know, <laughs> give, him a, give him a little, you know. I, not, I, I, I like young Frankenstein. I can't say that I've seen anything else that she was in. Uh, well, you never watched the Mary Tyler Moore show? No. Up? No. Nope. Yeah. She was good in that. And she wasn't afraid to, you know, ugly herself up like for a role like that in young Frankenstein. That's Cause she, I, I hate when, uh, I'm sorry, but this is more uh, a thing with actresses where they just always want to be the, you know, they yeah. always want to look good. Yeah. Like they're too afraid to do something like that. Right. Because they're always thinking about the next role, the next guest spot. You know, I, I got to be on a magazine somewhere. Because on the Mary Tyler Moore show, she was like one of Mary's friends and she was like, you know, like one of the hot friends or whatever. Um, she was a little bit older, so she was, you know a bigger big sister kind of way, you know, mm -hmm. but she wasn't like uh, a butch character. And then, you know, young Frankenstein, she just, or even, you know, Betty white making herself uh, dumb for that golden girl show. You know, she was the, um, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better term, she was naive. The, yeah. But she was like the, um, the slutty character on, um, I think it was Mary Tyler Moore as well. Was it that show that she was on? I can't remember. Anyways, uh, and then when she, for Golden Girls, when they approached her, they wanted her to play Blanche. But she's like, I already played a character like that. I got this other character in my back pocket. I want to play this this person from a place called St. Olaf. And there you go. Television was born right there. Okay. Anyways, this isn't a Betty White uh, obit. This is a Cloris Leachman obit. That's just old people in general. Yeah, but still sad. You know, hmm. even though when they're old, I don't know. I, I find it a little sad. Hmm. Leave it away. Okay, yeah. I got so I got a surprise for you. You ready for this? Go for it. I got a pickup. A pickup for you. You went shopping? No. <laughs> in the outside not. world? No, of course not. Did you Why would I do that? Coat? No, it's not it's not safe to go out there looking for video games. Who would do that? Not me. I stay home. You let your fingers do it in the shopping, huh? That's right. So I went online and I purchased something. Check out this bad boy. Oh my, this is this. large. See what that says there? Uh, caution heavy. That's right. <laughs> I and bought the you, entire. Lifting it up over your shoulder like that. This is the entire ACDC discography. Psst. Don't you have that already? But it's heavy. So I don't have the heavy it. one. No, no, no. I of course I have that already. That's not what this is. I'm making a joke. All right, I'm opening it up just for you right now. Mm, just for me. Why? Why would this pertain to me? It doesn't. It's just uh, we needed content for the show. Oh, I thought it'd be something I was interested in. Did you buy yourself a, a whole box full of uh, miniatures? You would be interested in what I'd make using this Ooh, make you That's bought right. a tool uh i guess it's sort of a tool mm. all right talk about star trek what's up matthew bandy matthew bandy uh, oh there's two things in here right on all right i'm going to show you the we will talk about Captain Worf in a bit. Absolutely. Hang on. Oh, jeez. Did you buy a plate of steel? <sighs> yes, that's exactly what I bought. <laughs> oh, I can't see. What does it say? It says, cook, bake, barbecue. Cook, so it's a bake, big, barbecue. Ooh. It's a big plate of steel that you put in your oven. 
or on your barbecue. Oh, is this like a uh, kind of like a pizza stone effect? It is a pizza steel. Ooh. So a pizza stone apparently is uh, very uh, susceptible to cracking. You have to be very careful with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, a pizza steel is just it's supposed to be way more durable. You can wash it. You don't have to worry about it getting wet. You don't have to worry about it cracking. Yeah, American pride. Bigger uh, actually, this uh, product is made in Canada. Ooh, good luck with that. <laughs> and that was a big incentive to buy it because, of course, you want to buy something made in Canada. I can't even open this thing. Where the heck is the? <laughs> Just burn it. It'll be fine. I see a bunch of. of uh, there we go. No, nope, that's not it. Hey, Matt Bandy. I did uh, prime and no, uh, I, I primed and I did a Xenophil highlight on a whole bunch of Reaper miniatures. And today I will start doing a white dry brush to enhance the Xenophil prime. I better, I better hurry up here. I'm going to lose our entire audience. The whole three people who are watching right now. Forget it. Talking about mini painting and rocket sauce is bashing your country. Yeah, made in Canada. So, Rocket Sauce isn't one of your favorite games, Canadian. Do they make Canadian games? games? Yeah, all of Bioware is Canada. Matt Bandy just started uh, using a wet palette. I've tried this, and I I've actually had uh, bad results with it. It doesn't stay wet. I guess I'm doing it wrong. Ubisoft is Canadian. Who? Uh, Ubisoft. Boobisoft. Never heard of them. Yeah. They're Canadian. Uh, well, the only he, Canadian game I know is that um, uh, that GameCube game. Silicon Knights. What was it? Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, the twisty mind bendy one. Oh, Eternal yeah. Darkness. Eternal Sanity's Darkness. Requiem. That was made in uh, Niagara Falls. Right, more Look cardboard. At you. You got a big piece of metal. Metal. Mm -hmm. You're you gonna go. sticker bomb it with your favorite uh, bands. Or some ACDC stickers on there. It's going in the oven to make pizza. Yeah, but it would be more metal if you did that. Then the then the stickers would burn. Then I got a lifter as well. Hold oh, hold look at you! Pizza. Just like a professional. All right. That big giant box had those two thin packages in there. Yep. That's that Amazon style. Yep. I sometimes just get a one vinyl record in a box like this. <laughs> Seriously. Just super glued to the bottom. It's ridiculous. No, they stuff it with like packaging material. So I'm making pizza this weekend. Nice. There you go. Yeah, I saw your photo. You uh, made some pizza before. I love making pizza at home. It was something I started many years ago, and I was terrible at it at first, but it's just one of those things that I slowly keep trying to refine, make it better. Yeah. Well, that's the last I'm time. Thinking. The last time I made pizza, I used the uh, Wolfgang Puck pizza dough recipe. And it worked oh. out pretty good. Oh. Well, that is a stage I am in. I am uh, always uh, tinkering and trying to make the recipes better and better. And uh, we don't have, we lost our pizza place here in town a couple of years ago. We had a place called Stouffville Pizza. And he'd made like, if you went into his uh, restaurant, you said, can I have uh, a, a large pizza with this and this and this on? And uh, can I get some wings with that? He would uh, throw you out of his store. Because he didn't do wings. He didn't do pizza wedges or potato wedges or pizza by the slice. You went in there, you wanted a pizza pie, that's what you were going to get. That's all he sold was pizza pies. Hmm. You couldn't just get a slice? <clears throat> no, he did not. It wasn't. Uh, so he his uh, place was uh, across the street from uh, school, and yep. he didn't want uh, riffraff. <laughs> he was old uh, Italian. <laughs> that's a smart move. <laughs> yeah. Did he have uh, an arcade in there? No. No, no, no. It was, no. 
there's no like messing around. There was just pizza. You went in there to get a pizza. <laughs> that was it. I miss being able to get a, a slice of pizza. Anything you buy here, you got to get it by, you got to get a whole pie, which is tiny, mm -hmm. uh, but you can't eat in the shop. You got to take it home. Yeah. Well, you, uh, no wonder he's out of business. <laughs> no, he, he retired. Steven coming in hot. No, he retired. Uh, retired and is living, uh, living well. That's the only reason why he stopped. And he retired. So all we yeah, have left not, here is so you uh, lost. Uh, all we have left left here is um, um, like you know, Domino's and yeah, Pizzaville and Pizza Nova and all those stupid rocket sauce. One of my best friends is opening a pizza restaurant when the pandemic calms down. In the meantime, he is selling them as frozen in the local grocery stores. Hmm. Fun fact. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Japan has pizza making vending vending machines. That's right. Yeah, I have seen that's that. That's true. And that's they look so disgusting. Creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I want I once got some uh, I haven't had pizza out of a vending machine, but I did get some hot dogs out of a vending machine once. Pretty bad. <sighs> no, I've never done hot dogs out of a vending machine. I think the most like elaborate thing I've gotten out of a vending machine was uh, a poppy seed bagel with cream cheese. Ooh. Years and years and years ago. Man, I would not buy a cream cheese based product out of a vending machine. Well, it was <laughs> well, it was a, I, it was a vending machine that was supplied by our cafeteria at work. Okay, I think they still okay. do it. And like he just whatever leftovers he had during the day, he would just put in the vending machine so people on the night shifts can go in there and grab something. Yeah, I, I, I was going to correct myself there because when I think of vending machines, I think of, you know, you stock the machine and it sits there for a week. Yeah, but no, they no. did have those uh, food vending machines where like every day it would just be like something, yeah. quote unquote, fresh would be put in there. I mean, you, it was you slide the door to, to get it out. I mean, it would be made earlier in the day, you know, or if it was the weekend and you wanted to risk it, you can get something that was made on Friday on a Sunday, mm -hmm. but it was a refrigerated, one of those circle ones. Yeah. 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 You know. It's uh, even though we have the occasional pizza making vending machine here, you don't see a lot of food vending machines. It's, it's like 95% drinks. Yeah. It's all any food vending machines, usually just snacks. You know, yeah, well, you don't chip. see that, like, people don't buy their chips and stuff out of a vending machine here. You got to go to the 7-Eleven. It's expensive, too. Like, I see, like, the, it's all that can be. Well, you only eat uh, twice a day, and you have to... Well, I still eat three times a day, just within 12 hours. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Or whatever it is. I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have it. myself a little snack right now, just because I can. Good for you. I'm not hungry. Mm. I will be in uh, about an hour, though. And it's supper time. Okay, so do we want to talk about this Long Shots movie? Oh, is that what you're saying? We got all this stuff to talk about. Yeah, well, we got Long Shots to talk about. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so last Saturday, we had a flood of people coming into our Discord server, uh, all demanding to watch Long Shots with us. It was uh, suggested to us by its rocket sauce. Then uh, the, the plan was enhanced by uh, Creepy Josh, who showed me how to work the uh, the old uh, Discord, and how to put the put your screen on there and all that. And uh, so that's what we did on Saturday, and just had a flood of people in there, a whole whopping one. <laughs> it's rocket sauce. It was just us and it's rocket sauce. It was good. We had fun. We watched the movie. I think it was the first time Richard watched the movie from beginning to end in a very long time. In one been a while. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, when I picked long shots, what I had seen of long shots mm -hmm. is the ending. Uh, it was a, one of those viral clips that went around for a while in the foosball community, um, where, you know, you saw the, the spoiler alert for long shots, uh, where you saw the, the one kid flip the ball from one end of the foosball table up over all the, the players and, and get a goal. And then all the, you know, people all start cheering and all that. 
It was a funny clip that went around. And uh, when we watched the full movie on uh, Saturday, I was expecting it to be more, a lot more of that. I thought that would be long shots, but I think it turned out that long shots was a little too competent for, for true to be trash. Like it was trash, but it wasn't like so bad. It's good trash. It was just a movie that exists. Yeah. And, um, you said you felt bad that we didn't put together a proper outline for it with all the fun facts and all. I, I just peeked on it right there. Right on. And it is um, equally entertaining to see the IMDb page for it, uh, but also extremely disappointing because <laughs> there's not much in there. <laughs> they, they kind of forgot this movie exists. Um, I'll say this about the movie. Yeah, it. I had competent, sure. Uh, I mean, it was still full of loose ends and of course, like, what what what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Odd decisions, things that you know, setups that don't quite pay off, and things like that. But it was the perfect movie to try watching on Discord as a group. You know, it, it was the just good enough to like hold your attention. But it was something you could talk over if you, if you um, missed a line of dialogue here and there. It didn't matter at all. Right. Um, and, and, you know, it, it was really just the perfect movie to try this with. So, bravo. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> because <laughs> I, if anything, whatever we think about the movie, I really enjoyed the experience. So I am, I am very interested in sitting down and doing this again sometime. All right. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Cause I, I feel the same way. I do want to do it again. I just feel like as if the movie could have used more scenes like that final scene, like it needed a few more goofy moments. Yeah, It wasn't goofy, crazy. If you want to yeah. see a little bit of crazy, head over to uh, the IMDB. Uh, <laughs> the, the cover uh, we, we called it long shots or long shot kids, right? right. Yeah. On IMDB, it's called long shot. But the photo that they're using, the poster, has long shot kids and features two people that may or may not be in the movie. Yeah, it does. Or, look, or it maybe that's right. a different um, photo of the, the main actor. Did we ever find out if Leif Garrett is a musician? Well, I'm in the fun facts right now. Right, get, give it to us. Leif Garrett made this film after a proposed biopic of Little Red. Danny Lopez was uh, uh, Little Red. Danny Lopez was canceled. He had his trademark long hair cut for this film. Afterwards, he grew his hair long again, but then had to have it cut short for The Outsider. That didn't answer any of your questions, did it? No, it didn't even make sense to me. Yeah. So th they just—it looks like they just took a, a photo of Leif Garrett. Maybe I should call this up. Yeah, who is Leif Garrett? <laughs> like, I don't... It, it, it's the way it's written as, as if, you know, oh, Leif Garrett. You know, we got Leif Garrett for this movie. Well, I've heard of the name before. I have. Uh, where, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. Listen to this one. Okay. The music for Leif Garrett's song, Give In, is played in the film. Well, there you go. Okay, so he is a musician. But these these photos, like this is not how he looks in the movie, and this is nope. not how she looks in the movie. Nope, not at all. This is I don't even, even I don't even know who that is. Is that the, is a, the girlfriend? This, uh, I think so. I think that's the 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 one with the French accent. But this isn't even the same foosball table. This is a completely different foosball table. That's what <laughs> oh, offends no. me the most. It wasn't green. <laughs> the field and the the men weren't yellow and black. That is false advertising. Hmm. Um, I, I guess, um, he was some guy who was like a singer all around. I want to be somebody. I, I, I want to do the music. I want to do the movies. Uh, I want to do, uh, modeling shots. I want to be the guy, but maybe he was in the eighties, late seventies. Rockstar says there's a VH one behind the music on him. So here we go. Ah, you did mention that, yes. Yeah. 
So, um, um, so what, what do we got to say about this movie? <laughs> well, it came out in 1981, which I think is a little surprising because it does seem to be a little bit of like it almost seems like a pioneer of that 80s formula. You know, like it, it definitely follows that 80s formula, but it, it'd be something more that I would expect to come out in 1985 or 1986, you know, just copying a bunch of other popular movies. Whereas this one, like, I mean, what what type of movie predated this in 1981? Like maybe maybe Meatballs or something like that. I, I, I don't know. It was fun to watch. Rock Sauce is fun to watch. Yep. Um, well, there was a bunch of, I, I don't know. So like, basically, let's just talk a little bit about the movie. So basically this guy is a soccer player. He's right. a really good soccer player. And he's on a, a team with his friend who is the goalie. His friend hurts his hand, breaks his hand. His hand's in a cast. Mm -hmm. uh, in theory, it'll be fine in six weeks, but for some reason they feel as if they have to change their, the rest of their entire life for this event. That'll cause I mean, how long does it take for a hand to heal a broken bone and a hand to heal? Well, it's six weeks, right? I don't know. It was still in the cast by the end of the movie. Yeah. Well, I think the movie takes place within six weeks, but th this guy decides that he's going to give up his soccer caller, soccer college scholarship. That's a mouthful. Mm hmm. He's going to give that up because he can't play with his friend. No, no. Okay. The hand, the broken hand was something completely different. This was, it's hard to tell because this was just one scene right at the beginning. And then you never hear about the scholarship or his parents or anything like that later on in the movie. He's a good soccer player. He's got a scholarship to college. He doesn't want to go because he'd rather play foosball. We don't know why until much later in the movie when they drop a line of dialogue saying something like he's going to take the money that he would win, which I believe was $50,000. Yes, 1981, 50000 So that's a lot. Um, and then he's going to use that money because he's, he really wants to go to Europe. Right. But he doesn't tell anybody that until like towards the end of the movie. He's talking yeah, to that girl like, I want to go to Europe. When him and his buddy, the goalie, get in a fight, because that's what you do in a movie, you're, you're friends. And then at some point you have some friction and all that. Yeah. And his friend's like, you know, you know, you don't care about me. You don't, you know, you don't, you care only about yourself or whatever. And then he gets mad. Leif Garrett gets mad and says, I did this for you. Because I wanted to spend time with you. I wanted to be with you because you broke your hand and we couldn't play soccer anymore. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there might be a few problems with this movie. There might be. <laughs> I don't think, like, it made no sense why this kid. It, it was back and a, forth. He's yeah. a really good soccer player. He's got, he's so good that a college wants to bring him onto their team and give him free schooling for this. And he's like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to go and play foosball. And we were commenting as we were watching the movie that this kid has everything already. He's got his, yeah. he's got, he's got the girl already. He's got the, uh, the, the, the skills to, to play. He's got like, there's nothing like that to, he's basically downgrading himself to play in this foosball tournament to win fifty thousand dollars i mean if he just sticks to what he's doing he could make a hell of a lot more than fifty thousand dollars and he's got the rest of his life to go to europe yeah i mean if they would have made it that he was going to die of cancer in like two years and this was his last shot to get into to go yeah, i think when, to when he said he wants to go to europe it wasn't even for a specific reason it's just i want to go because i like europe right like yeah soccer. he didn't even it's not like he wants to play like he has right. to get there now yeah and like if, if even if, if someone like a professional team over there said, Hey, if you can get yourself over to Europe, we'll get you on the team. You're, you're, you're good, but you're not good enough for us to pay it for an airline ticket for you to get over yeah. here. Something. I don't, I don't know. It just didn't make any sense. It, it, it had <laughs> a lot of the hallmarks of eighties movies, but they didn't 
play out the way they traditionally do. For example, you got the main guy, then you got his new partner, the, the friend who comes in, and she is a little younger, but she's kind of got a crush on him. Right. Um, and that is kind of played up a lot. But then he meets another girl that he's interested in. And so you see, okay, love triangle coming in. But then they reveal like she's only 14. Right. So it, they wouldn't be a couple anyway. And by the end, there's not like, there's really no back and forth. Like, who do I choose? It's just, uh, no, you're a 14 year old kid. I'm, I'm, I'm going after this girl over here. Yeah. Um, where traditionally that would be like, like in Teen Wolf, right? You got, uh, Michael J. Fox and he's mm -hmm. got a uh, booth right there. His yeah. friend yeah. who's his friend right. the whole time. And then he starts pining over the blonde. Yeah. And then at the end of the movie realizes, oh, you know what? She's just a stuck up snob. The, the girl I really like has been here all this time. Look what I learned. Yeah. None of that. Yeah. It's almost like as if they didn't. Uh, want any of the like none of the, there's no bad guy in the movie nobody there's no bad guy and and the guy had and there's no real challenge other than that um they're well, i i mean they're they're kids but they still manage to get hotels and fancy you know hotel rooms and everything and well she sold and her the competition itself is no challenge they just immediately yeah. play and oh we're here we're at the final but oh no now there's a you know a little breakup between the team and we got to get everybody back together. Yeah, if there's anything that you need to see from this movie, it is the entire foosball tournament that they go into because watching it will make you appreciate at least other movies getting the basics down for underdogs entering into a tournament. Yeah, like, this is watch like this is like a bad news bear mighty ducks scenario. Yeah. You need the other team that's really strong. You need the players that are up and coming but they don't have the skill yet. They got the heart but they you know they don't have the right training. They don't have the opportunity and they got to fight for it and then you know they got their setbacks and then they come back stronger. Yeah, and well and like no even like shots of a scoreboard you know, like, so you can right. see what the score is. No how visible, far back uh, are they? Uh, you know. The, the only referee you see is at the very end for the final game. Before <laughs> that, right, it's yeah. just like people play foosball, shaking hands and like, yeah. okay, I, I guess we're going to go on the honor system. We will go tell the people that we won. Uh, so Rocket Sauce says, wasn't it Stanford University? Yes, I believe that is correct that he was trying to get into. Uh, Rock Sauce says $50,000 1981 is like a million dollars today. Not quite, but it, it was a lot of money. Uh, Steven uh, is behind the ball once again and asking when did this become a film dango? We, we already uh, set out what we were doing weeks and weeks in advance. So I'm sorry you're behind the ball, Steven. Once again, film dango is dead now. This is the <laughs> it new is not dead. iteration. It is not dead. We're doing it next week. This was just something different because we wanted to watch the movie together. So, but we only have, we can't time it so we can both watch three movies in a month together. That would be like three weekends. So we're doing one movie and we're putting it into this episode of Retro Film Dango. If you don't like it, well, fast forward. I'm going to look into doing this more regularly because I think we can resurrect the cc hangouts as a film dango oh. hangouts oh wow that i mean i thought i thought it was fun at least one well yeah i mean once in a while, maybe once every two months or something once in a while person. yeah i don't know uh and sauce says the pacing is super fast like the speed of a foosball game maybe That's it's right. all a metaphor for a foosball game who knows what one thing you do get out of this, though, is you do see some proper foosball technique. Yes. You, you there was no spinning. a lot. No, no spinning. spinning. Like, a, as a kid, you go to up to a foosball table, and that's what you do. You just start spinning those things, yeah. and, like, I just want to hit the ball. There's yeah. no technique. There's no strategy. You see them, you know, juking those things back and forth, and then slight taps, and then passing, and, yeah. you know, holding it under, and then waiting for that opportunity. That's you interesting never, to watch. You never see the actors and the action on the board at the same time. Like the actors did not train themselves to play the game or Clearly. anything like that. Yeah. All of it was done in close-up shots where they obviously got some real foosball players to 
play all the action. But yeah, there was no no spinning. If you if you play foosball against someone who knows what they're doing and you go up there and you start spinning, you're going to lose. Hmm. You're going to lose. And the, yes, the ref's reactions to the scores. I still love that uh, touchdown that he gives at the end of the film. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> that was something else. Um, did you catch to that? The um, so there was an uh, when they get to the tournament, uh, the parents, their parents are two of the people's parents are looking for them and they call the police and the police get this call, like go over to this uh, foosball tournament and look for these kids. So the, it's some desk sergeant that uh, gets the, uh, gets the call. He's playing a solitaire on the, t on his desk. Mm -hmm. And he gets the call. And he's like, okay. He tells his minion, the, the black officer, okay, go ahead and uh, go find these uh, kids. So the officer goes to, the I guess he was a detective. He goes to the um, tournament, says, "Hey, get those kids uh, in the security as soon as they come in. I want to talk to them." And so one of the guys, one of the officials at the foosball tournament, mm -hmm. and we even commented on this when he when he, uh, he comes up and says, "Hey, you guys are needed in the security office." And the one guy, I think Leaf Garrett, says, "Yeah, we already took care of that." He's like, "Oh, okay," and then they keep going. And brilliant that, move. And that uh, brilliant move. <laughs> but that's as far as that thread in that movie went. You never saw the cop again. Did they get in trouble for Deacon the cops? Did the, the cop, like never again? The parents eventually make it to the foosball tournament and confront their kids. But where did this cop go? Did he just like, I'm done. I'm going to go eat some donuts now? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just remembering that though. Anytime somebody approaches you yeah, about something serious, that. like, uh, Hey, you know, uh, you got to go. They're looking for you. Hey, took care of that already. Yeah. Thanks for letting me know. It was pretty nice. But I just thought that was funny. Like, it just went absolutely nowhere. Like, there was nothing. Like, what was the point of that? They could have left that out completely. Well, that and many other things in the movie. There, It's just, it was a bit all over the place. Yeah. It's almost as if uh, they didn't quite know what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. And then the soundtrack. You did mention a few times how the soundtrack was Tons very of music, and it was it was music that they seemed to just whatever they could get the rights to that sort of right. fit. Uh, that was thrown uh, in there, so you got a boingo, lot of boingo. We had uh, that was surprising. Um, Danny, Elfman. Danny Elfman, yeah, singing a, and dancing. A legit performance by Oingo Boingo. That was that was surprising. That was before they made it. They had a few hits, so they were still an up and coming band. But hey, less than so. a decade later, that guy uh, recreated the sound of Batman. Yeah, Batman and uh, Beetlejuice, and mm -hmm. yeah, that was that was impressive. Um, but a lot of the music was like there'd be lyrics it wouldn't be a score you know there'd be like somebody singing or whatever during yep. the scene with quite two loudly <laughs> and the music's really loud and it's like they're not at a like party or anything like that where you would expect to hear stuff like that oh yeah and the other performance was by billy wild i think sauce took more notes than we did mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. anyways it was it was fun to watch but i it, <laughs> if you tried to watch it on your own you wouldn't yeah, last no. five minutes. No, no. It, it's definitely a movie that you'd have to watch with other people to sort of enjoy. Mm -hmm. I wonder, do they got a trailer on here for... Uh, we didn't play down. Tra no, no trailer. Foosball. Foosball and Leaf Garrett. This is a better... So people can see what we're talking about here. This is a much better uh, poster for the film. That's it. That's what they looked like in the movie, at least. <laughs> Those are the actors. Yes. So it looks nothing it, like that other poster. Like that's the guy bit, with the shirt off. And... But they really obviously just took whatever stills they could because this clearly makes it look like she yeah. is the uh, main character here. You, that's true. But they did do a good job with uh, cropping out her from the from the movie. She wasn't. That's in not of bad. Yes. Pretty good. And then these got to be stills. Right here. Somebody got paid to put that together. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So that's See, a, now, um, aren't you glad that wasn't a full episode, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that worked out nicely. I think we did Wanted well. That. 
think we did well. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, too bad. I liked it. Boop, 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 boop. You're right. We did have a lot of stuff to talk about. Yeah, we still got, still got, and then we're 45 minutes in. See? I had it it all planned out in my head. Okay. I got to ask you, have you seen this trailer for Godzilla versus Kong? Is this something that uh, we should watch right now? I wouldn't mind. I, I just, about a few days ago, a week ago, I don't know what it was. I start seeing uh, Godzilla versus Kong trailers pop up in my YouTube yeah. feed. Yeah. And I've seen them before because people will make their own. They just take clips of one movie and another movie and they do a fan trailer. And I've, I've heard that this thing is coming out. They're doing this legendary monster universe thing with Godzilla and King Kong. And after a few more of them show up, I'm like, oh, this is real. Because this is kind of one of those franchises that if they just stopped, I'd completely forget that they even started it. (laughs) But I did not expect to see what I saw in this trailer. All right. That's a big deal. Is this your first time watching? I have never seen it before. So this is my first time. Here we go. Godzilla versus Kong. This is our only chance. Brian Cranston in this? Nope. No. Nobody from any of the other movies. Oh, nappy. That looks pretty good. We need Kong. Oh, nice monkey. The this guy. Needs him. To stop what's coming. And this child. She's the only one he'll communicate with. I knew that they had a bond. She had nowhere to go, so I made a promise to protect her. And I think that in some way, Kong did the same. Send some jets at it. Yeah. Because it always works. Oh, sure. It's Godzilla. You haven't seen the best part yet, don't worry. The myths are real. There was a war. Oh. And they're the last ones standing. I can't wait to for greatness because I'm built from it. Who bows to who? Nobody goes stop for me. Kong bows to no one. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my oh, go see that Nymax. There you go. Uh, they gave him a big monkey hammer. <laughs> <laughs> good Mm. that is so stupid that i am absolutely down for it yeah for sure that might be a good time for sure (sighs) the thing that kills me though is the original movies these were just big dumb animals like king kong was just a big monkey Mm -hmm. that you know people worshipped and then he got loose and he started doing monkey things and Godzilla was just a, a big uh, 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 advocate of like stop radiation because this stuff's dangerous. But now they're trying to make them all smart, like they're these leaders of revolutions and uh, important figures that would maintain balance in the world, and they can use uh, monkey hammers. Apparently, 
apparently rocket sauce has hbo max so we could do a live watch on discord when is it coming out does it say um this year oh okay march 26 in theaters oh, not too far away exclusively on hbo max Ooh. march 26 hey we've never done a film dango on a brand new movie before that'd be some new territory no be some new territory right there yeah monkeying around <laughs> oh boy steven there you go do you want to do you want to keep debating like nerds about who's going to win are you team godzilla or team king kong L look i uh love king kong i just watched it for the first time last year and i thought that was a great movie and if anything if this stuff like this comes out and it encourages the film studios to release like the original movie in 4k that's good times and they haven't released that old movie in not 4K. in 4k no i think it's on i think there is a blu-ray set for it but not like a nice 4k set like are you expecting it. much from a 4k release of that film original like film has tons of resolution in it and it's not about uh, and i know it's a black and white film but when it comes to 4k and when i say 4k what it really is about is the hdr and making uh the image look more realistic like real colors you know and um that that's what it's about so those movies were shot in with you know, whatever was the professional stuff at the time. And there's lots of it. Like as long as they didn't shoot in something stupid, like 16 millimeter, which mm -hmm. is a very grainy film. Um, they shot it in 35 millimeter. There's just tons of resolution there. And even in black and white, uh, HDR gives you the contrast between light and dark that much better. So you see so much more detail uh, in that on the, on the older films. So mm -hmm. give it to me. Make it so. So I, I'm a fan of King Kong. I've only seen the one um, uh, Godzilla movie mm -hmm. uh, with the guy in the rubber suit. So right. I'll take stop motion over mm -hmm. guy in rubber suit any day of the week. So I'm going with King Kong just for that reason. Wow. I didn't think you were going to have an opinion at all. You just say, I, uh, I don't really care. I mean, I don't, but that's, that's it. That's the only reason why I go. By the way, oh. I did not I forgot to mention, I forgot to put this in the only I did watch Clash of the Titans, the Ooh, Henry, the, the original one, the Ray Harry Housen. Harry Housen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's not a very good movie. <laughs> it's got some good scenes in it. Those movies are fun. Um, it, it, you want to say good, they're fun. I, I have I, a poster I, of that on my wall. I not watched here. the DVD extra of it, and it had, uh, Housen, Harry, Harry, and the Henderson Harry. Housen. I had him, and he was talking about how the movie came about was that he wanted to do, he didn't want to do a destruction movie. He wanted to do a Greek fantasy movie. So he had a bunch of scenes in his head. And I, I can do a stop motion of that, stop motion of that, stop motion of that. So then the, the writer said, okay, we'll just link them all together. And then that's the movie. And you can definitely see why, because it is so disjointed. Like this guy gets his powers. Like he, the the gods give him a sword, a shield, and a helmet. Yep. The helmet can make him invisible. The, the sword is really powerful, and the shield has like a reflective thing in it, and it's powerful. He gets all three. He just takes the helmet and leaves. Leaves the sword and the shield there. <laughs> and uh, what's his name? Uh, Burgess Meredith is like, hey, you forgot the other stuff, but. If he had the other stuff, it would make it wouldn't have made the next scene make sense why he does things the way he does. Like he just sneaks in with his helmet. So he goes and does the next scene. And then uh, he loses his helmet. It just it's off in the swamp, lost forever. So then he so then Burgess Meredith catches up with him and says, Here's your sword and your shield. And then he does the stuff with the sword and shield. And then they realize, like, oh, we we've written ourselves into a corner. So then the gods make him now this owl that flies Google. around. Him and helps them, which is a total ripoff of R2-D2. You mm -hmm. could tell that they were just channeling Star Wars throughout this entire movie. <laughs> Burgess Meredith was Obi-Wan Kenobi. The The princess was a Princess Leia type character. Like, uh, What year was this? Uh, 1981. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, but It's been a long time since I've seen that one. I watched Jason and the Argonauts a whole lot more. But uh, there, there were some 
great scenes in it stop motion scenes in it like the the scene in the medusa cave was or, or her lair that was just fantastic just the way they put that all together i thought that looked great uh and then they're they're cracking the release the kraken guy that looked uh pretty good too mm -hmm. so yeah, Jason and the Argonauts has some fun stuff. And then um, there were these Sinbad movies, too. I, I've only seen the one, and I forget which one is called which. But the first one that came out, I really liked that one when I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, he talked so, a little bit about those Sinbad yeah, movies. The Adventures, was... The Voyage of Sinbad, Golden Voyage. Advent I, I get the names confused. But some really fun animation in, that one, in those as well. Stop motion animation. Yeah. Okay, uh, is Matt Bandy still here, or did he take off? He's like, We're going to talk about Star Trek. Star Trek time. Star Trek time. Matt, are you there? I, I think he left. So like, talk about Star Trek. We didn't, and then now he's gone. So he's oh. done. I don't blame him. So, um, yeah, uh, our buddy Duke there forwarded us this uh, article on Giz Gizmodo. Gizmodo. And it's a little article, little interview with um, Michael Dorn, who played a wharf on Star Trek The Next Generation. And uh, he's talking about how he has this idea for a television series where Worf is the main character of the mm -hmm. show. And he's kind of pitched it to Paramount a few times, but there hasn't been much interest for it. So I guess now he kind of feels comfortable about putting it out there and seeing if uh, maybe the fans would pipe up and maybe get uh, something going because that's how way things work now right you just put some you just float like hey maybe there should be female ghostbusters and then next thing you know two years later there's a female ghostbusters movie whether it makes sense or not it doesn't matter they just do it so uh, i guess we'll just go into uh his idea should i put it should i put it up on the big screen oh you're already kicking chris roberts out of here because <laughs> you know, no Star Trek. Oh, sorry. I didn't say anything the whole episode until it's just to complain about Star Trek. Listen, we're just going to talk about what we want to talk about. That's it. Chris Robert goes on a vinyl show and he shows uh, Nintendo tapes. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what that's about. But, anyways, you know, he talks what he wants to talk about. We'll talk what we want to talk about. So, uh, Michael Dorn says basically the script I wrote, he wrote an entire script for this, is instead of looking at the Klingon Empire from Starfleet, we look at Starfleet from the Klingon Empire. And it has been going on for decades. I don't know what has been going on for decades, but uh, the Klingon Empire just can't go on. It's Russians, basically. And they decided that they have to either die with the sword in their hands and go extinct or change with the times and become something different. And Worf is that guy. We have to change with the times and that's the mark of a warrior and so two things happen they start letting other races into the klingon world and the only way they can do that is by letting starfleet officers that's sort of the way it's done we'll let in other people but first starfleet officers because we understand starfleet they're soldiers we're soldiers the second thing they have to do is their resources are limited and dwindling because the klingon universe is just like the federation they have planets and worlds and societies that they own but they do it in a brutal way. And so they have to go out to every one of these worlds and either give them their freedom or try to work with them, which is something that uh, he uses a word there I can't pronounce, <laughs> <laughs> which is something that anathema to Klingons. Fancy words. I, I don't know that one. And you'd since, have to be able to speak Klingon. I, I think so. And since Worf opened his big mouth and said, this is what we have to do, they say, okay, then you're the guy that has to go out to do all these worlds. And every world is different. Some worlds are rebelling. Some worlds want to be part of the Klingon Empire. Some worlds want to be independent. And so that is every episode. What would you think? What would you think of that idea? I thought that many, many years ago, it would have been fun to have an episode a series based outside of Starfleet and Klingons seem to be the most interesting. Once you got to uh, like DS nine era and they really started growing uh, the Klingon world and making it beyond because, you know, original Star Trek Klingons are pretty superficial. It's just, they're the warrior yeah. race. They develop them a bit more next generation. 
definitely with Worf and going into his character and his episodes and then getting into DS9, they really got something going on where the Klingon Empire seemed fleshed out. You, you could see the their, their political structure and all the rivalries there. Uh, it's more than just, you know, going and, and having the <laughs> yes. honor thing. Right. Uh, you know, they had their back and forth of these Klingons feel this way and they feel that way. And I always thought that would have been an interesting idea to do something, set it on a Klingon ship and, and see what they're about. This, um, for one, contemporary Star Trek, this is all going to be oh, 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 martial <laughs> arts, special effects, flipping around. Yeah. And just the idea of knock, knock, knock. Hi, I'm Worf. What can I tell you about the Klingon Empire? Like every single episode. <laughs> well, he's, like, he's, uh, he's a, a Mormon? Klingon's witness. <laughs> he's a... <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I always thought it was kind of interesting because there because you know there is there is the Federation and they have this ideal way of doing things and they're coexisting with this Klingon empire that's kind of too powerful. They don't want to go to war with, but you got to figure there's got to be tons of planets in that, in their empire that don't want to be part of the Klingon empire. So mm -hmm. are they, should they go in there and freedom? It's almost, it's almost like Iraq, right? Like should the United States go in and, and invade Iraq? If they do, will it spread democracy among the middle East? Obviously that didn't work, but you know, uh, and they kind of touched it in Deep Space Nine with Bajor and the and the Cardassians, right? Uh, but the difference was the Cardassians were they had the snot kicked out of them, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Like they were at, in a war with the Romulans, was it? Or am I remembering that wrong? Mm -hmm. Wait, weren't the Cardassians Wait. kind of like they had to to go peel back, right? They had to they had to retreat, and one of the planets they retreated from was Bajor. Right, because they were in a war. Right, right. With someone they occupied Bajor. Right, I, they were at war with somebody, and they they were losing the war, so they had to peel back. So then that's when the Federation stepped in and took over Deep Space Nine and took over, uh, basically took over Bajor, uh, mm -hmm. not took them over, but it, you know invited them into the Federation kind of thing. Okay. Um, so they kind of touched on that, but yeah, I always wondered about that with the with the Klingons. Like, there's got to be worlds in there, and the, does the Federation go in there and? save them basically so mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of opportunity in this sh in this show to have those kind of philosophical ideas that we um you know that we like from star trek you know like yeah you could see some benefits from retreating all that and yeah you can look at it as kind of a ussr thing as well with like the ukraine and you know those kind of um uh east european countries so if you if you um you know, downplay the wharf a, a bit. He can be the guy for the Klingons, but if you had representatives of different um, alliances, you know, you got the Klingon Empire, you got uh, Starfleet, you got a couple different things, and they're they're trying to expand their territory. They're going up to these other worlds and saying, "Hey, you want to join us?" Well, they said we could join with them, and then you know, it's this whole political thing. I mean, yeah. everybody trying to maintain control, but still try to maintain peace. But eventually, you know, some friction's got to happen because they're all trying to get the same uh, free agents out there. So it, it could be a whole thing. But forget it. You're, you're talking about uh, philosophical and, and and intelligent discussion and, and happenings where it's got to have... <laughs> lasers <laughs> well i'm, I'm thinking i are gonna be swinging every episode i'm thinking in an ideal star trek like some like let's just say there's go a, back to the 90s uh, let's know? just say there's a, a studio exec there that's actually no no i want to make a real star trek you guys have your pew pew shooty shooty star trek i want to make a real one so I, i'm 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 pretending that that's something that could actually still happen hmm. um so there's a couple of things though that that couple of holes in the idea one is that Worf, like you can kind of go with the idea that maybe he has evolved but Worf was always not the most diplomatic character he was always the guy that would want to go in shooting first and that mm -hmm. so maybe you can make it that he has you know gotten wiser with age and you know wants to do the more Picard philosophy of things but he wasn't he was never really a leader 
uh, on a long-term basis. He was good, like, okay, take over the Defiant and go in there and, mm. you know, do the, uh, um, you know, some sort of uh, SWAT team thing or something like that and, and save Cisco or something like that. But he was never a character that was like Captain Picard or even Captain Kirk. You know, mm-hmm. where you would stop and think about what he's doing. Well, yeah, I mean, we know Worf from pretty much from Next Generation, and he had a role to serve on that show, right? He had to be that guy who would yeah. recommend when it was necessary to use force, when it was yeah. necessary to take precautions, uh, so that Picard could, you know, make his decisions. Um, And then moving to DS9, they even made that part of his character arc there of where he was kind of quick to make those decisions, but he had Mm -hmm. to learn how to do a different job and fulfill a different role. So enough time has gone by. You could put Worf in something like that. Um, I look at Frasier when they did the spinoff from Cheers. Right. We didn't think he would be the best character for a spinoff. And there you go. He went on for like eight or nine years. You can develop any idea. We're still talking Star Trek, Matt Bainey. Don't worry. Yeah, but you did miss a lot of it. And sorry, <laughs> Chris Roberts. I know you're enjoying silently. Uh, the one other Not thing, now, though. The one other thing, though, um, is that uh, the reason why they always put humans, or at least human-looking characters, in the lead for these television programs is because makeup is really expensive and time-consuming. So if you're going to have a Klingon show, it's not just one character. What like you, you know the original series you had Spock, next gen you had um, Worf. Uh, Data you know. had his makeup. Worf had the prosthetic. You know. A little bit, you know, uh, you know, you had to put contacts in uh, uh, Troy, you know, whatever. Um, but there was only one character that had to sit through three hours of makeup. Now you're going to have several characters if it's going to be a Klingon centric show, um, and, and that's just I think it's just going to become expensive and time consuming. Yeah. You're going to have to put two like put a bunch of humans in there to well offer. that's why every time you see an alien in like next generation or whatever they always have long sleeves and high yes. collars right yeah. <laughs> so they can just do the bare minimum makeup yeah yeah of course Never see a cling well, on in a tank top well and even on deep space nine the only person that had the back uh well, the only ferengi that had the back right. uh, prosthetic was uh quark all the others wore that that little back visor that somehow thing. hovered on the back of their head somehow and never fell just stick off. it on i guess so they'll have magnets in there in their like skull. it may it, it they were able to make it look okay and it was a practical decision well apparently like that's the toughest that was the toughest part for them to do and the most time consuming was the back of the head to mm-hmm. make it look right and uh armin sherman was the was the lead guy so he's the one that had to sit there through all that makeup all the time. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't think you can really take that many shortcuts with, unless, you know, technology has improved that you can just throw Klingon makeup on a bunch of yeah. actors. But. Well, yeah, you're not going to have a full cast of Klingons. And it it's goes back to just traditional storytelling when you, especially sci fi fantasy, you need someone to relate to in that main role. And if you're, someone to relate to is like an alien character. Sometimes it's not quite clear. I mean, you got Worf who so many people know from over the years, you know, okay. He's an approachable character, but still any newcomers to the series, like what's a Klingon, you know, why are they doing things differently? Why is his sense of morality different than what I'm accustomed to? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I there is potential there for for a pretty good series. I think. <laughs> what? That's Steven. What are you saying? <laughs> I'm reading this. I don't see anything funny. <laughs> what? Enlighten me. Uh, what should I wear? Wear one of what? Uh, is that the I funny guess. thing? Yeah. Just... Oh, that's not it. They should work that seven of nine as a board queen angle from Picard. It's okay. I don't even know I'm what that a, means. I'm having a private laugh with Steven. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> what's so, what's funny? I don't get it. I just thought it was funny. What is funny? Tell no, me what the... Uh, what? Never mind. No. Hey, what's next on our outline? Oh, my God. I, I'm so lost. I don't know what's going on. 
Uh, hey, you were watching Cobra Kai. Yeah, okay. So Cobra Kai, if you tuned in to that Discord thing, which one person did, and you, uh, I did give a little preview to my thoughts on Cobra Kai because I have uh, started watching the show. We wrapped up uh, Kim's Convenience, which was good times. Um, and then we needed another show to watch. So I approached Sarah and I said, do you want to watch Cobra Kai? And she's like, I don't know. I don't really like the the karate kid too much i said yeah but you know people who really you wouldn't think are would be into the show are, are into it so what do you say we give it a try she said, yeah sure let's give it a try and so we watched it uh right now we're on episode 10 of season one so we, How many we episodes got, are there the, i think 10, there's 13? 10 and i think there's 10 i okay. think 10 is the season yeah there's 10 per season and uh I'm having a good time. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what people are talking about when they're saying that this is like, uh, you know, like the show wears the '80s on the sleeve, and it's it's like, um, like it's self-aware that it's mm. not a good show. That mm. it's. Um, I think they know that they go over the top, but I, it's not so heavy on the '80s. I mean. They they met that's the humor with the uh uh Johnny Lawrence is that he's kind of stuck in the 80s. He he you know, I, I don't know if you've reached the point where he's starting to uh you know clean himself up, yeah. That was change just a little bit. I watched mm -hmm. today, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, he's uh, he was still driving his old car, you know, and everything that that's kind of the whole, so that whole was character. So that was the only thing that I had a problem with because he was driving that that sweet uh, Firebird from the '80s. He was going around doing odd jobs. There's no way a guy going around doing odd jobs would drive a car like that. You'd have a truck. But then you learn that he was just doing it as a bridge thing. So mm -hmm. it kind of it was a complaint, but then it, it went away. But I don't know. I th I think it's a legit good show. I didn't think it was like I, I don't know. Like I. What's 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 like it's so bad it's good like people presented it as like oh it's a bad show no, but it's so I bad. Think, it's I think well it depends on who you're asking I don't know who you're getting those comments from I've, I've heard it from tons of people everyone who watched it, like oh I know I shouldn't be watching the show I should be watching something better but this is you know good just to pass the time kind of thing and I don't know I think it's a legit good show it I, I find it entertaining I I've watched everything that there is so far and I'll I'll continue to watch it. I will say that it is it does get stupid in some areas and the teenage drama stuff really starts yeah. to wear thin. I, I, I did experience some of that today. We I, we could even see it coming a mile away where you know they had the two males who were gonna fight over the, the girl and of course it, it, it gets to that point. And that mm -hmm. felt very soap opera ish, you know. Well, just be prepared for that times ten because it <laughs> okay. really ramps up and I, i'll say the point that really kind of lost me on i can't you know follow this teenage stuff too much more is I, I it probably happens before that but definitely the last episode of season two is where you just if you haven't already by that point you're just gonna throw your hands up and say okay i gotta deal <laughs> with this for the rest of this show because that's what they've discovered they like mm. well at least i can go on to the next episode i don't have to sit there and stew on it for a long time like they've already done season three so i can just move on from from whatever yeah. it is uh, it, it's an entertaining show and like i said the the whole uh daniel johnny thing there when they play for comedy uh, very yeah. entertaining. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not enough um, kung fu in, in, in it. Like, there's only, you only get a few scenes here karate. and there. Karate? I say kung fu. Okay. Um, but sure, karate. Oh, well, you're going to get more. Okay, good. Because I'm. I, that's what I want to see. I want to see more of that. Until you said I've seen enough. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, the, so far there isn't that much in it. Okay. But, um, you tell me when you're ready to talk about it more. Okay. On a similar note, I, I've still been uh, plugging away at the, the Daredevil 
yep. final season, which a uh, slow progress, but I am going through it. Uh, very much enjoying it. I I'd say I'm enjoying this last season more than I did the first two seasons. At least now I can approach it more easily. Now this season is very, uh, <laughs> as far as I remember, season three is very Punisher heavy, right? That was season two. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. Season two is the Punisher. Season three. I, I think you said you hadn't seen season three. Maybe I haven't. The last <laughs> thing I remember was the Punisher. Maybe I haven't watched season three. Did you watch those Defender, all those things and stuff? Defender? What's Defender? Defenders, like they took all the four shows and they, they got oh. them together to do no. like an Avengers thing. No, I haven't <laughs> seen any of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking now maybe I probably should have watched that. Oh. Um, but, well, it again, it's, it's a comic book thing. You just, yeah. okay, there was something else that happened. Fine, I'll go back and see that later. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm not going to let that uh, deter me from finishing this season. But, uh, no, I'm just enjoying uh, the show. It's written well. Uh, a lot of uh, fun moves. Uh, and I'm really enjoying uh, Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. Know, his, his, his whole kingpin, the way he speaks and everything, was a little off-putting at first. It just seems so uh, odd. But I, uh, I, I love him in the character. He's great. Yeah. Defender is a car part. He's trying to make you laugh again. Defender. Ah, ha, ha. And I guess I'm supposed to wear the Ferengi headdress thing. I see. Is it because I'm bald? Is that, is that the funny? I think that's what yeah, Stephen was implying. Yes. Hilarious, Stephen. Congratulations. You got to laugh. Out you you think that's funny, Stephen? How dare you say such a thing? Oh, I think it's hilarious. Friend. I think it's great. I think he deserves bonus points for that. Speaking of uh, comic book television... Uh, I got sucked back into WandaVision once again. I didn't want to watch. You, I, you do nothing but complain about it. So I get into work Maybe this morning. Maybe you can just not watch it. I get into work this morning. And uh, the overnight guy was supposed to put the show into the system. And he didn't do it. So I got an email at 8.23 in the morning. Where's my WandaVision? I'm supposed to have WandaVision at 8 a.m. And it's not in there. So I had to put uh, the WandaVision in real time into our system. Mm. So it was either watch the show for a half an hour or not. <laughs> so half an hour. What do you half an hour for free entertainment from your company? You're so being paid to I, watch. Exactly. It. Exactly. I mean, it, it's the whole like football thing. Like I got into football for a while because I had to work all those football games. So I might as well just watch the games and enjoy them. Now that I don't have to watch them, I, I don't really care. You know, I don't care what happens. I, I knew like, you know, Drew Brees and was Peyton Manning and all those guys back then. I knew the names of the players. Now I don't know who the heck is in the NFL. I don't care. So. I watched episode four of WandaVision and stuff finally happened in the show. It, stuff finally happened. They you mean they built up. up to this stuff? They built up to this stuff. Now, I think that the whole execution of the first four episodes, first three episodes was really terrible. I don't care what anyone says. It was awful. The whole thing did not make any sense. If they would have mixed in stuff from this episode into the first four, I think that would have been a little, it would have cleansed the palate a little bit, like in between the garbage, you know, so at least you got something to keep you going. But they saved it all for this episode four. And uh, the, the episode also um, proved my self-worth to humanity because you know that's uh, we just live through these pieces of entertainment and your self-worth on your opinion on all this stuff hinges on whether other people like the same stuff that you like mm -hmm. and what this show did in episode four was brought a character from one of the marvel movies that I like, it's like in my top five of the Marvel movies. I enjoy it, but nobody else seems to like it. And they brought a character from one of these movies into episode four of WandaVision. So that justifies my opinion 
for liking that movie because they brought the character back. And that justifies me as a human being. Aren't all the characters in the movies now, don't they all team up and, and do Avenger no, things together? Has, has been non like haven't seen them. Haven't seen this character. And now they're there right there in episode four. Hmm. So now I am, I, my opinion is justified and therefore I am justified as, and I felt that's what, I guess that's what like, you know, these people who like are really into the extended universes and all that, when they see the character that they like and they're like, Oh, somebody else likes, they, they continued on with that character. So that, that, then that justifies me. Okay. Was that a little too heady for you? Did I go go too far? Uh, <laughs> I, I, you just reminded me that I'm supposed to be doing my Marvel movie yes. thing. Yes, I still haven't watched the second one yet. Come on, don't I've lose that got, momentum. I've only got one day. <laughs> don't lose what? What's the date today? Oh my God, it's the 29th. Well, for me, it's the 30th. 30th, so. yeah. Get on it. So yeah, I got to uh, watch the Incredible Hulk, which is a movie I like. I like that movie. Well, you'll like it again because it doesn't change. They have not changed it. It's not like Star Wars where it continues to change and the thing that you like, they changed it. And now it's gone hmm. forever. This movie stayed the same. Didn't touch it. Okay. I think we're done. Maybe I'll watch it. I think that's it. <sighs> send me, a, send me a, a private message if you know what I'm talking about. With the WandaVision. Like Google it. No, just let me know. I want to know if you know what I'm talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. People so out there, justified. maybe. You feel justified. It's like, yes, they can carry on that character. That means that what they th they did there is that like a big spoiler it. of who this character is. And I don't, I don't know what a spoiler is anymore. You say one thing and people freak out. Oh my god, I can't believe you said that. Thing. I don't know. It might be. What was it? There was that Spider-Man game, and people didn't want to know who the villains were in the game. That was a spoiler. I mean, you put, you put an old beat em up in and they give you all the villains right at the start. There it is. There's your, your cast of characters. Choose one to play. Now, if you say who's in the game, that's a big spoiler. Can I give you a spoiler for Cobra Kai? No. I don't want, I'm going in fresh. Hmm. No, don't do it. Hmm. Unless it's a bad guy. Who's in it? Okay, they're giving spoilers down over here. You're bad. You're bad people. Don't read that, Richard. For when you watch WandaVision, when you catch up. <laughs> All right. Uh, follow Cartridge Club's only weekly podcast on Twitter. We're at Retro underscore Fandango. That's it. We're the only ones. Nobody else is doing a weekly podcast except for us. Uh, get a boner with Retro Fandango. I don't think we'll ever stop saying that. And uh, check out our Discord. Join in because we'll be doing some. We might be doing some King Kong versus Godzilla in march that'd be something what do you think of that peter jackson king kong you ever seen that never seen it you mm. said it was terrible i did not enjoy it no. yeah and i've only like i've seen bits and pieces of it but i've never seen the whole like the whole thing i don't even think i've seen the ape in the movie hmm. i like the original one he's the big one yeah with the fur and, and uh the hammer steven the contrarian of course, he, he liked it. Of course, he did. Mm. Of course. Why would he not? Nobody likes this thing, so he likes it. That's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. Steve. That's it. We're done. <laughs> Get you back to uh, munching on your snack. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. It's time to go make a proper breakfast. And then uh, get, like, uh, some Hulk in you. Start watching the Hulk. Get as far as you can before your family wakes up. Mm. Oh, they're probably up already. Oh. Well, tell him to go back to sleep so he can watch. I, I got to watch. Yeah, remember, remember the university scene? Where Hulk smashes out of the uh, yeah that overpass thing. Yeah, ah, that was fun. Maybe I like you're... the visual. I like the visual design of the Hulk in that movie. I think that uh, Mark Ruffalo does a great job with the Hulk, but I did like the the, the Ed Norton Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like that when when by the time they got to Mark Ruffalo, they decided to make him kind of look like the actor instead of yeah. just a generic hulk yeah. like they did in the first two movies but yeah. I, I like the um the nods to the uh bill bixby series with the you know, the yeah. eyes when, well, when the change. intro the intro to that movie was great because they took a lot from that original mm -hmm. series 
in there. Yeah, and it, it's like the most interesting time of the Hulk's character of like after his origin, when he knows he's got this problem and he's just like desperately trying to get through a day uh, in peace and like yeah. just trying to live a life. And then things always happen. Like just, just leave me alone. Yeah. I love the Hulk and all the, the Marvel series. I like what they did. Really? That. Even that Ang Lee one. No, no, no. That was garbage. Oh, that was, and that was garbage because it was so melodramatic. Like, I like Jennifer Connelly and other things, but not in that movie. That movie, for for a movie about a guy who turns into a big green monster, there's not a laugh in it. <laughs> no, no humor whatsoever yeah, in that movie. It's they, so serious, except for the weird comic book panel editing. Yeah, everything sliding around. That was no fun. Awful. Like, there's no fun in it. No, no, fun it's just misery. Book. Yeah, <clears throat> that's not fun. At least, like, I know the you know Tim Burton Batman was dark, but you had some fun in it. Joker had some, some laughs, good lines. Some funny know? moments there. And, you know, you like to complain about bad CG. I kind of say, well, it's okay for what it was. The Hulk in that first movie looks oh, yeah. terrible. No good. No bueno. Okay. There you are. <clears throat> okay. So what movie are we watching tomorrow? You want to watch a movie tomorrow? I, 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 can I do that tomorrow? <laughs> I think I can. Yeah, I think I can. If you That's want. Dolomite. What else is on TV? <laughs> Will you come up with a movie and we'll watch it. <clears throat> I got to well, say, though, on Discord, your delay was incredible. Like, Was I? Yeah. Like, it felt like a guy who I, I was talking to a guy on the other side of the planet. Like this, mm -hmm. that's what you imagine it would be. There was like a good five second delay. Mm. Yeah, I'll have to work on that. I think it's just Discord. I think it's <laughs> you put up with. I'll, I'll try to um, think of what I want to say a few seconds <laughs> earlier. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for Goodbye. joining us, uh, Curtis, uh, Steven, uh, uh, Matt, Mandy, Matt uh, Mandy, Chris, Matt Roberts. Chris Roberts. You got all uh, the Rock the uh, Californians in there. That's right, yeah. The only people who are awake, I guess, at this time. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.